Welcome to Done On Fire right here on High TV, your luxury channel. We're checking out Botanic. Uh, with me, I have Clifford. Hi, Danu. And I have Dimitri. Hi, Danu. Uh, so these guys are the backbone and the front face. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say face, but <laughs> front face, yeah. <laughs> just anyway, uh, of running this place. And if you have not been here, you're missing out on a great view and a super chilled out Friday or Saturday night. Now, I have to tell you, uh, I've been speaking to this Dimitri with a different face for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always Absolutely. spoken to him with that face in my mind. And you know, it's just so sad that I've never taken the time to like actually know it was you. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. At least we got the same name. I know, that's great. So I'm going to all now know that it's you who I'm talking to. Thank you. Funnily, Thank I don't you. even have the other Dimitri's number. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. A very elusive person. <laughs> <laughs> it has been quite a hard challenge. Catch you if you can. <laughs> yeah. So Clifford, let's speak a little bit about you. So Clifford has seen me uh, some years ago. Yeah. When he was, <laughs> <child. laughs> was a child, he says. <laughs> That's an exaggeration, no? You were no, like I was I was I was like what, nineteen? Yeah. yeah, you have grown your facial hair, no? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is still growing, so fair enough. Yeah. yeah similarly there. Uh, so what brings you here? So you're a DJ? You, that's your passion? Yes. So essentially, um, I, 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 like Danu said, uh, we met in Kandy, I was in school and then I moved to Colombo for university. And then uh, while I was in uni is when I met uh, Dimi2 and Dimi1 okay. and uh, they were um, running uh, Click at the time, the right. club. And then obviously DJing at that was... that young age, we were running into clubs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can't age. believe I'm meeting <laughs> like at the age of camera, 20, you're yes. coming into clubs and going up. No, I was DJing at the club. So. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Anyway. So, uh, Did you have anything to drink at the age of 20? Uh, no. <laughs> it's like, he mm, says with no. a smile. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. So I, I started as a DJ at the club and then um, I graduated and then I was uh, looking for internships and I finished my... What did your candy parents say about this? Oh man, uh, it, was, uh, it was a tough sell, but I, know. Um, I managed to do it because I kind of um, explained the whole uh, story to them because although I, uh, I was introduced to the field of hospitality through music, I fell in love with the food, the drink and like, you know, everything that encompasses the field. Just imagine so the candy neighbors would have said, Oh, no, clubs, what do you mean? Oh, no, 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 Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. But then, uh, while uh, I was looking for internships, uh, both the Timmies were like, why don't you come and join yeah. us full time? Now that you come here always. <laughs> now that yeah. I'm here always. So, eventually, I... Um, grew in that role now it's been what seven years Dimi? Yeah absolutely yeah. And, uh, and no regrets ever since. No. None from our part. Yeah. <laughs> you I catch them not. young. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Dimitri have caught them young. Caught them young. That's yeah. the way, best that's way to train them. No? That's the best way to go. <laughs> Alright brilliant. So tell me about Botanic, the thinking behind it. I know um, before the whole you know our restrictions uh, it was there was a nice vibe in Colombo everyone was out and I think we also had like some more greens in our hand to spend. Now we are just quite correct, and I think yeah. um, if only leaves can <laughs> grow, grow on trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Sri Lanka has been definitely hit harder than a lot of other yeah. countries simply because we had the Easter tax right before. With so a big bat. With the big bat yeah. for another two years. Yeah. So as soon as we're on an upward trajectory, something happens. Correct. But touch wood, this time I think we are on the right track, and the country seems to be. If everything goes properly, we won't have another lockdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how did y'all survive during this time? So we were actually pretty creative. Um, we had to be very agile and switch our business model uh, during the pandemic. So also with the new health and safety regulations that come into play, yeah. there's always capacity issues. There's always the health and safety issues about social distancing and everything. So we actually took those rules very, very seriously. And in fact, we were one of the first nightlife uh, bars to actually implement those uh, those rules and regulations. In fact, uh, and so yeah. much that even the government did a pilot program yes. uh, with us. Clifford, I'll let you explain on that. Yeah, so um, remember uh, whenever you go to a venue, you uh, scan the QR code, the state. Yeah, 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 so it was actually p the pilot program happened here. Oh, wow. Um, okay, okay. So then, uh, and like, like Dimi said, we took the regulations very seriously and we were one of the first venues to actually per close for an extended period of time. Uh, but we were fortunate enough because the hotel that we are in right now um, was a, a level one um, hotel so they had uh, rooms 
So okay. we actually close to the public and we focused on uh, converting our kitchen which only does about 20 covers a day uh, with like you know meals like this and we converted it into a, a 300 cover kitchen to hotel serve operation. the hotel. Oh wow, so, okay, that's um, cool. We yeah. didn't do delivery but we were actually doing about 300 packs Pack. so Some of those guys are stuck there for like <laughs> one, two weeks in they have a row no choice. They're like and <laughs> you need to make sure the FNB is perfect because yeah. that's all they look forward to. I know because there's nothing else <laughs> but the only room, contact like they have with the outside yeah. How much of physical can yeah. they watch? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> All right, let, let's speak about the food that we have here. So I've got my starters. So I've got beetroot. <laughs> no, you will not taste You're being beetroot a vegetarian? the same again. <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian. Ah, I don't eat red meat. Red meat, okay. Yeah. Right. Seafood, everything. No, I should not say that publicly. I eat, I eat. But no, I, I don't. <laughs> I somehow fudge my way out of it. But right. tell me, what do I have? So uh, essentially, Dano, this is one. This and the prawn toast have been. Uh, two items in our menu that haven't changed over the years. Yes, um, okay. So it's been, we've been running about for four, a little more than four years now. And uh, it, these are the things that have been from the start. So essentially this uh, is a um, creation of Chef Rishi. I don't know if... Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so Chef Rishi, um, first Sri Lanka's first Michelin starred chef, uh, he managed to put this together. So this is essentially roasted beetroot. Uh, um, uh, underneath you'll have hummus. And then for a little bit of crunch, you'll have the uh, um, toasted wild rice. So um, it actually, I know beetroot is a very, um, uh, very basic vegetable <laughs> in our in our cuisine, but essentially we've tried to create something. Uh, Put some sex into beetroot. Exactly. Correct. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> fortunately, our patrons love it, and uh, that's one thing that hasn't changed. Um, what do you have? I'm actually having the. Uh, Baramuni ceviche. So we actually put this on the menu in it's order to uh, to uh, take forward the ceviche culture in this country. Right. So ceviche is actually a Peruvian dish, and when the Japanese came and colonized uh, Peru, they brought their sashimi with them. The, per uh, the Peruvian people didn't want to just eat raw fish, so they uh, they made adjustments and added lime. So lime and these kinds of um, uh, 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 tastes are very amicable to the Sri Lankan palate. So we've made our own rendition of it. Instead of uh, in, uh, in the ceviche, there is something called tiger's milk, but we made our own rendition of leopard's milk. So it's just a way of fermenting and um, cooking the dish with the acids and the indigenous uh, elements that we have in this country and localizing it. I can see Dano's face change, it's actually not leopard's milk. It's yeah, actually so not I leopard's <laughs> milk, that's what we call it. <laughs> I, know. I know a prawn toast, a prawn toast, it's a prawn toast, all right. Yes, that's We're getting into a break, toast. we'll see you on the other side, do stick around more to talk to them, we do come back. So we are checking out Botanic. Uh, they have amazing food apart from their fabulous drinks outside. I'm talking to Clifford and I'm also speaking to Dimitri. Hi. See, I got all the names right. <laughs> Second time. <session>. Yeah. <laughs> Achievement. <laughs> so we have a huge spread here. This is how royalty might have eaten back in the days. Can I know what is what, sir? Yeah, so essentially, Danu, these are all sharing platters. What we have in front of us, this is a whole line fish. Uh, with the uh, roasted root vegetables. We've got the Masaman lamb shank, which is one of our signature dishes that are on our new menu. And that's accompanied with garlic rice. And that dish that is right next to you, which is meant for a single person, is the vegetarian uh, jungle, jungle curry. curry. And that's all for you. <laughs> Thank you. My life has been quite single. <laughs> so it's on okay. Valentine's Day? It was. <laughs> it is. I think it will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't that, but sure. 
luck is a very limited offer in my life. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we are talking about uh, this life today. I'm so happy to see like restaurants sort of breathing again and having some life being pumped up to them. Let's speak a little bit about you guys. What took you into this field? Uh, well, basically, um, as you know, Danu, I also have not gone to school here. I only went to school here for about a year. First, I asked him, like, where did you school? He said, no, I didn't go to school. I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> here came after. <laughs> <laughs> One year. Yeah. Um, so I was living abroad. Um, I was born in actually Indonesia, in Jakarta, moved to India. I was in India for about 10 years. And now we do a lot of, uh, lot of work with the India markets as well. Uh, so that I made some out. connections, right? Yes, yes, exactly. I, in fact, we just came back from Bangalore and Mumbai after doing a pop-up there. Ah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so essentially, I was in uni, so I was in UK for 10 years as well, and my partner, who's the head of Cantaloupe uh, and Botanic, Dimitri Jayasurya, um, had wanted to start this F&B hospitality and everything and move it forward, and this was just after the Civil War. So he had contacted me in 2009, I believe, when the Civil War just finished. I just yeah. finished my MBA and everything. It was all at the same time. All at the same time and then came back down to the country. And at that point, hospitality was in a very different state it is right now today. Yeah. Um, I wish it was continuing in that progress. Otherwise, we'd be in a different level right now. There was now. this <laughs> hype about Sri Lanka coming out of the war and like, so many people just dying to see Untouched, this Untouched, like, yeah. you know, venues and, True. you know, things like True. that. True. So, came back, um, decided to do my first nightclub with Dimitri, uh, Click, as mm -hmm. you know, in Union Place. And that's where we met Clifford yeah, and yeah, Clifford like started. Said, and yeah. Underpage actions happened at that time. Exactly. We take anything on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not going to contest. So, we actually pivoted away from the nightclub scene yeah. because we're all getting older, as you can Correct. see. <laughs> and also, it's too much of drama to deal with, like uh, that getting too. in, getting out. <laughs> then you have like people giving you attitude. Then exactly. things breaking, groping. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, those kinds of things don't happen here at Botanic, no? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they are uh, a bit more sane. They are a bit more sane. What happens after this place is not your problem. Totally yeah. not. After problem. I go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you being a candy boy. Um, coming into this field and now you're holding, you're looking after the marketing side to it. Mm, how hard is it to market something here? Because we have such a limited amount of people and we have the same faces rotating. It's a challenge. Absolutely. How many times can they come? I mean, the thing <laughs> is, we still, we only have a captive audience of about 3,000 to 4,000 people like rotating every day, like you rightly said. But what we try to do, Danu, is like obviously like, you know, develop our product constantly keep developing it um, like we said earlier it's always like um, local ingredients with like international like cooking techniques so and like I said earlier we always rotate our menu we keep innovating our cocktails so every time they come they always have something new to try yeah and uh, we That's try we to bring them back. yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep them like Tomorrow we'll put another one. Not <laughs> Tomorrow, another one. <laughs> but a different one. <laughs> a different one. <laughs> and also like very uh, interesting ones. Like, you know, we, we try to make cocktails with like rampe, tamarind. Yeah, and you said that you have put coconut oil into this. Yes, uh, yes. so the alcohol, I mean like we, we just like make um, emulsifications with like coconut oil and then like, you know, we try to put togarashi in the rim. So it's always a multi-sensory experience. Like, you know, your the cinnamon stick is uh, smoking, so that kind of infuses your smell that is to the seven <laughs> senses kind yeah of i know so, it's, uh, it's touching and tickling all parts of it those are the <laughs> things that we kind of do to keep people coming back oh uh, great uh, and obviously the entertainment is a big part yeah, over that's here true. that's there i know that's, that's just given <laughs> yeah uh you know permits and all are so i'm going to try some food i think you all should also eat because otherwise they yeah, will think absolutely. that i'm not sure. really eating absolutely yeah uh, I will I move fish. away all these things which are put for decorations. <laughs> uh, you know, cardamoms. yeah, you know the saddest part. Uh, my sister cooks too. Mm -hmm. Even if she has put like one cardamom, I'll get that. And mostly, <laughs> it's like the last bite that you have been holding on to. Right. And then like, <laughs> so yeah, your entire palate. Is yeah. Gone. I have a. I have such bad luck with uh, <laughs> this type of food. I'm going to try my jungle. And we made it vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oops. Oh, yeah. The cinnamon made it. You uh, want to cough, did you? Yeah. Now, when, like, now when you all come up with the menus, mm -hmm. do you all like 
look around? How do you all find the inspiration? It can't so, be like you all just think about it in the night, no? <laughs> no, no, absolutely. So, like um, we were talking earlier, it's always uh, local ingredients, Dano. Okay. Like our, our entire but mantra. But who believes in putting, okay, I'm sure if you put this with this, it'll taste good. And I mean, we, um, like um, Dimi was talking about earlier, it's Dimitri, uh, Mr. Dimitri Jayasurya, who's a head of uh, operations and also CEO, who, he's also a very big food aficionado, and obviously we have. Uh, yep. <laughs> Two good uh, team members, Abdul, who is in charge of um, FMB. Um, so we actually have a very um, inspiring and uh, young, vibrant team. Young, dynamic team. team. It's amazing. <laughs> well, if vegetarian can taste this good, I'm going to be happy being a vegetarian. Uh, let's get into a break. We'll see you on the other side. Uh, you can never get enough of this view in the night. It's gorgeous. It's it's our city line. <laughs> it was sad uh, skyline, right? It's a skyline. Yeah. It's still growing. It's a growing skyline, which is amazing. Yes. And I think it all just lights up beautifully, though. It, it really does. Yeah. Uh, now, this is a common problem that everyone has when it comes to running restaurants. They're like, oh, it's so hard to maintain staff. It's so hard to like make sure that they come to work the next day. How do you all handle it? And especially because some of these recipes are like, this is what makes your way all are. And you don't want these to go out. Exactly. Absolutely. So <clears throat> essentially, um, what we try to do is we try to um, foster a sense of uh, family and a sense of teamwork in, in like in everyone who works here. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, I think um, biggest example of that would be me because I've, like I said, I joined like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been here yeah, like about eight <laughs> years you know, now. I'm not going to wait, Phil, I'm just going to go, go, go for ahead, it, Dan. Go this for is like it. my kind of place. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, also, one other thing is that there's always like room to grow. Mm -hmm. And like uh, we were saying, we always try new things. We keep innovating. We, we keep putting out uh, new kinds of food on the table so that that way the kitchen is not bored. So they're not constricted to doing the same thing. And we also allow them to um, express themselves like creatively in whatever way or form that they prefer. And also being Asia's number 73 is, uh, is very helpful because that, that, that is very good on anyone's resume and we are very proud uh, to have received that award last year. I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Chantakana, don't question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have always heard about this, the top 50 restaurants in Asia. Yes. Now they've extended. Yes. yes. So essentially, they've always had the. It's uh, the governing body is world's fifty best, mm. and then they have subcategories like um, Europe's fifty best and Asia's fifty best, etc. And then there's two fifty best restaurants and fifty best bars. Um, so Sri Lanka for the first time got on it last year. Uh, not just one, but two uh, bars in Sri Lanka. One is us. We came in at seventy three, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Smoke and Beaters. They came in at number uh, ninety two. They're in Hirikatia. They are in Hirikatia. Yeah. Well done, boys. Well done for you. Who yourself. knew that Hirikatia <laughs> will become such a hot spot? No. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As a mountain boy, do you like the coastal area? I love it. I mean, what do you like the most? Uh, it's a tough question. Everyone <laughs> asks me this. <laughs> it's just like in, in Candy, it like all. It feels like time goes slow because you know it's so cool, it's cozy. You betrayed your, <laughs> but um, your own soil. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Colombo and the coast is like also where my heart is because that's where the hub of the action. Yeah, it's happens, just completely yeah. gone from the mountains to. <laughs> that's right. So that that's a very good thing about living in Sri Lanka is that we're exposed to all those different Correct. things from you know like safaris. Yeah. To mountains, to beaches, to yeah. jungles, to plains. So like apart from some just photoshopping African uh, <laughs> elephants, <laughs> they yeah. kind of saw it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I saw this elephant. <laughs> yeah, it's from Africa. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. Um, now, in terms of this uh, rating that you all have very quietly put a small board there <laughs> to say that you all have got it, um, how do you all apply for it? Um, so oh. essentially, it's uh, not an application process, no. uh, Danu. It's um, they have um, um, a, governing a, a governing body, and then uh, they. Uh, I think um, it's in India uh, for this region, mm. and then they have uh, um, P 
people who come and quietly inspect. Oh, and, wow. and so you don't even know. We don't even no. know. So they actually approached us about it. Uh, and we got uh, um, a message from them and we weren't even sure whether we it was legit. We thought it was a joke. Like, like, you you don't even know whether there's somebody who will come and <laughs> exactly. you know who will come. No, 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 no. They won't tell, like, you know, they won't, they won't tell us when they're coming as yeah, well. But when point. they say we want it, that's how we knew. But then we didn't know whether it was real. <laughs> oh, and wow. this also happened during the lockdown yeah. when like all our entire team's morale was down. No, no. We were coming here thinking like doing all the yeah. meals and like the trying to keep time, the yeah. place afloat. So it gave us like a much like, needed uh, like a June too. Yeah, and we were very lucky to meet some couple of the governing uh, body uh, committee oh, okay. members when we went to India as well. Oh great. <laughs> and what do they say about Sri Lankan restaurants and our food here? Um, obviously, um, the Sri Lankan FMB scene, in, especially in Colombo, is like evolving at like uh, such a high tra hmm. pace. And um, obviously, they they want um, they like restaurants and bars that are constantly pushing that. And uh, also different thinking absolutely. vibe. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely, and also it helps that like we always wanted to highlight like Sri Lanka and like our produce and like what we grow here, yeah. like some of the cocktails, like uh, ingredients and garnishes. Like we actually grow here the lemongrass and I all. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, like oh we don't have any. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fresh. Yeah, we try to uh, we try to be sustainable and like. Uh, In terms of famous people who have come here, right? Mm. Oh. Um, not a big sports fan, but uh, we've had a few um, um, cricketers from uh, the New Zealand team, yeah, okay. uh, and yeah. then um, Peter Kuruvita is done. Yeah, Peter Kuru, uh, Chef uh, Chef young. Peter is like you know he's a, he's one of us. He's, he's, one, he's of one of us, us and he's, he's a yeah. friend of, of the brand. <laughs> Yeah. Always, like, you internationally, know. Uh, um, you all might have had them and you would have not seen them. Yeah. And we are, we've also brought down a lot of pop-ups also yes. over the years right. and very so uh, accomplished chefs and venues and stuff. That's, absolutely. You know, um, so and your pop-ups have always done very well. A yeah. lot, yeah. So Amazing. even Chef Amin Nasadu, who is very famous yeah. uh, through Netflix, uh, she did a pop-up here. Right. So in terms of pop-ups, we've actually had quite a quite a few, yeah. yeah. Amazing. And I think during the pandemic, that's the way to go. Yeah. And, you know, I think as you clearly know as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> like curated amounts, just nice set of people. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Anyway, uh, so these guys are the ones. If you have a complaint as well, just shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to compliment them, they're always here. Um, well done, guys, for being recognized in in the top list of Asia. Thank and you for having us. Um, amazing, have you guys on the show. It has been. A wonderful time here. We're going to see you with another cool episode of Done on Fire. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap. Thanks, guys. Thank you.